And the genius of Ken Dodd, preserved in his notebooks, forming the centrepiece of a new exhibition. Now, before Sir Ken Dodd died five years ago at the age of 90, he asked his wife, Lady Anne, to burn the 1,000 or so notebooks he'd filled with jokes, thoughts and theories. And thankfully for Dodd's fans, she decided to go against his wishes and this weekend a selection of those notebooks can be seen as part of a new exhibition dedicated to the entertainer. Colin Patterson has this look. It's the first time anyone's seen it. Sir Ken Dodd's notebooks can now only be touched whilst wearing white gloves, even if you were married to him. That's the wonderful thing about museums. They treat everything with such respect. We could never afford meat pies. I'll never forget the times when my mother would treat us by putting a crust over the dustbin. <laughs> For more than six decades, Ken Dodd was one of the UK's most popular stand-up comics. When you dream, do you dream in Technicolor or black and white? I always dream in black and white now. Well, I mean, at my age, it's mostly repeats. And, uh... In his house, he kept more than a thousand notebooks full of jokes, musings and his thoughts on life and left his wife, Anne, with very specific instructions about what was to happen to them. In the latter years of his life, he did say, you will burn them, everything when I'm gone. You will burn all my notebooks, won't you? And I promised. It was easier just to agree. You can't say, no, I won't. He might have burnt them himself. He was a very private person. I'm interested in this one mm -hmm. because he is so famous for his long shows and how they go on for hours. Oh, yeah. I'm spoiling the quality of my life by being so self-indulgent and egotistical. I must take some material out. And I used to say, really, especially in the latter years, I used to say, shorter shows, longer life. Happiness, happiness, the greatest gift, the greatest So what made you decide to keep them? I never thought of burning them. I knew I wasn't going to. I knew I couldn't. Not because I thought they were valuable, but I thought they were valuable because they were unique. Next year, Liverpool will be the city of culture. We're having evening classes in graffiti and the dockers are having ballet lessons. <laughs> I love the fact he can still make you well, laugh. Well, he does, because I've not seen that page either. <laughs> How much have you learned about him from oh. reading? Uh, it's not, I always thought he was clever. But I found out how much more clever he was than I realised. Isn't that awful? The final preparations are being made for a new exhibition entirely dedicated to Ken Dodd at the Museum of Liverpool. This is the Moggy Coat, uh, probably one of his most iconic costumes. This whole section is about Ken the legend. This is Dickie Min, uh, which is my favourite object, I think, in the whole exhibition. But the notebooks are the real highlight. They've never been seen before, ever, by anyone outside of, of Ken's house. And they give a little insight into his vulnerabilities as well, which you don't often see. He was, the, he was the ultimate performer, so as soon as there was a camera on him, he knew it was there and he was great and he was amazing. But just to see that little bit of uncertainty, I think that the public will be quite surprised by that. I can't make you laugh. The laugh, it's there. In this. And as for what Ken would have made of his wife going against his wishes... I wonder if it would be... Hmm? I told you what to do. And I, th I feel, surely, he's put so much work into that. Surely you wouldn't have liked to see it go up in flames. I couldn't have seen it go up in flames. How much do you miss him? Oh, God. Every day. Every day, but he's around me. He's in the house with me. I talk to him. Colin Patterson, BBC News, Liverpool. He was such an extraordinary character.